heard the warnings from the aid groups on the ground. We've heard the warnings uh, from the medical teams on the ground who are struggling to continue to provide uh, crucial medical support uh, during this siege. And now, of course, we've heard the warnings from the United Nations saying that what we are witnessing now is a humanitarian catastrophe unfolding in Gaza. We heard uh, earlier today from the UN's World Food Program. They are appealing for $74 million to support their relief efforts over the next 90 days. There is a huge appeal for international support on this front. And we have already seen uh, numerous countries stepping up, uh, preparing aid to get to Egypt, to cross in via the Rafah border crossing. Of course, getting it across uh, appears to be the key issue at this stage. And we heard uh, from King Abdullah of Jordan, which has been amongst those countries preparing aid to travel onwards to Egypt. He spoke uh, very clearly at the Cairo Peace Summit about the need to get aid into Gaza and also about the double standard uh, that he says that the world is seeing when it comes to providing that humanitarian relief uh, for Gaza. Take a listen to this statement. He said, anywhere else attacking civilian infrastructure and deliberately starving an entire population of food, water, electricity and basic necessities would be condemned, accountability would be enforced immediately and unequivocally, and it has been done before, recently in another conflict, but not in Gaza. And as you can see, we have seen that outpouring of condemnation uh, from world leaders, particularly here in the Middle East, and we have seen that reaction from the popular front as well, protests taking place, demonstrations in solidarity with the Palestinian people. In fact, earlier today, my team and I uh, spoke to Palestinian families, Palestinian refugee families who've lived in Jordan all their lives, but still have family members inside the Gaza Strip that they haven't been able to return to, they haven't been able to meet with. They say they're checking in with them every hour, hoping they're still alive. And what they're hearing from their families is that they simply are struggling to go on with the lack of electricity, running out of food, running out of water. It is a humanitarian catastrophe, it has said by the UN. Fareed? Thank you, Nada. It's great reporting. Stay safe. Next on GPS, I speak with one of Israel's most decorated soldiers, former Prime Minister Ehud Barak. I'll ask him about the potential ground invasion when we come back. The Whole Story with Anderson Cooper, tonight at 10 on CNN. Your record label is taking off, but so is your sound engineer. You need to hire. I mean, indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash hire. My frequent heartburn had me taking antacid after antacid all day long. But with products like OTC, just one pill a day blocks heartburn for a full 24 hours. For one and done heartburn relief, Prilosec OTC, one pill a day, 24 hours, zero heartburn. Mucinex it's the Sue Sore Throat Medicated Drops. Uniquely formulated for rapid relief that lasts and lasts. Stop my baby! Get Mucinex it's the Sue. It's comeback season. There are more identity threats than you realize. LifeLock alerts you and works to fix problems with a dedicated restoration specialist. Go to LifeLock.com. Verizon Small Business Days are back. From October 16th to the 22nd, get a free tech check and special offers like a free 5G phone. Plus, switch, keep your number, and get up to $300 off with Verizon Business. It's your business. It's your Verizon. I've got the cabin for three days. It's going to be sweet. What? I'm 12 hours short. Have a fun weekend. <laughs> employees to their own payroll so you can fix problems before they become problems Whoa. get paycom and make the unnecessary unnecessary see you down the line ah morning cough congestion i'm feeling better all in one and done with new mucinex kickstart <laughs> better now new mucinex kickstart gives all in one and done relief with a morning jolt of instant cooling sensation it's comeback season Stars Play in Abu Dhabi is a region's leading streaming service that brings you the magic of films and the excitement of sports to your favorite device, be it uh, a television or your mobile phone. With a business like ours, we need a range of talent from technology as well as creative. We found Abu Dhabi to be our hub for accessing that type of talent. Let's do it. 
Tea Self Setup featuring Google Nest products. Now you can easily install your system that's backed by ADT's 24-7 monitoring with no long-term contracts. So you have a home with no worries. Brought to you by ADT. Sure, you can get data everywhere, but you have to use it all the time. That's not really you. With TrackPhone, you can get great coverage all on nationwide 5G for a lot less. Plans start at $15 a month, no contract. TrackPhone. Feeling sluggish or weighed down? Could be a sign that your digestive system isn't at its best. Metamucil gummies make it easy to get the fiber you need, promoting your digestive health for a better you. Metamucil gummies, the easy way to get your daily fiber. Sleep more deeply and wake up rejuvenated. With Purple's new mattresses, fall asleep 20% faster, have less aches and pains, and sleep uninterrupted. Visit Purple.com for it. That first time you take a step back. <laughs> I made that. With your very own online store. I sold that. And you can manage it all in one place. I built this. And it was easy with a partner that puts you first. GoDaddy. Closed captioning brought to you by Mesobook.com. We only represent mesothelioma victims and their families. Call for a free book. Call 800-282-4444 or go to Mesobook.com. As Israel's military masses on its border with Gaza ahead of an expected ground invasion, I want to bring in someone uniquely qualified to talk about IDF strategies. Upon retirement from the IDF in 1995, Lieutenant General Ehud Barak was Israel's most decorated soldier. He would go on to serve his country as defense minister and prime minister. As prime minister, he led Israel through the second intifada of Palestinian uprising. And as defense minister, he oversaw Israel's massive ground operation in Gaza against Hamas in 2009. Ehud Barak joins me now from Tel Aviv. Um, Prime Minister Barak, let me begin by asking you about this siege. Do you believe it is militarily necessary to have such a dramatic cutoff of water, fuel, food, which means hospitals can, can operate? Uh, I don't recall, you know, when the United States had faced insurgencies in Iraq, that they ever imposed this kind of complete siege of a civilian population. Is it militarily necessary, you think? It's not the utmost important uh, element, but it's part of it, and I don't believe that there is already a major crisis in Gaza. Uh, basically, whoever went to the south and uh, lived there in the new camps, tent camps uh, started by the UNRWA uh, will get these uh, convoys uh, through the humanitarian uh, corridor and Israel will not, will not let uh, Gaza, uh, Gaza feel uh, empty of uh, medical uh, uh, kind of uh, materials for the hospitals and so on. So it's, it's important but it's not the, the most important element. Tell me about the, the goal. The Netanyahu government has said the goal of their strategy is to destroy Hamas. Do you believe that's possible? Yeah, I think that uh, the, the goal should be to uh, uh, eliminate any military capability of Hamas and its capacity to reign over the Gaza Strip. It, uh, we do not intend to erase the ideology or the wishes and dreams of of uh, many members of Hamas and that all around our world they are part of a wider power, Muslim Brotherhood and AKP in Turkey and some people in Qatar. Uh, we cannot erase the Hamas as a, an ent entity but as a operator, a, a military operator in Gaza and as the ruler of Gaza we can do it. Of course it cannot be completed from the air. It will need this massive uh, ground operation with uh, thousands, probably tens of thousands of boots on the ground. The Biden administration is, uh, from what best we can tell, cautioning Israel to be careful not to go in too big, too, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to kind of devastate uh, uh, Gaza completely. Again, you've done this. Is, is that possible, uh, you know, or are, is the idea of going to have to go in in massive numbers, go door to door, you know, tunnel to tunnel, building to building. 
Look, it's a... Uh, I would say that uh, I never use the, the word inevitable in, in uh, military affairs, but uh, I would say that in 90 plus percent that we'll see the coming days a major invasion into uh, Gaza Strip. It will take, even to take the, the, the northern part of the Gaza Strip will take some time, probably uh, two weeks or whatever, three weeks, depend on what pace it all be one, but to clean it from the uh, physical and the, and the human resources of the Hamas might take uh, many weeks or, or several months before it's completed. And we are aware, we do not intend to stay there forever. The whole operation uh, has to face uh, four different constraints. One is the hostages, the other is the risk that it will spread into much wider conflict with Hezbollah in Lebanon for the others. Uh, the, the third one is how to manage this uh, dialogue with the international law. We are committed to the international law, and we are fully aware that our universal support and legitimacy will erode a long time when the numbers of uh, people who, who are uh, citizens who are uh, hit there will grow, in spite of the fact that the reason for them being there is the fact that the... Uh, uh, Hamas coerced them into it, becoming kind of human shield. Uh, we are aware of uh, these constraints, and the last one is the question to whom we can pass the torch, because we do not intend to uh, 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 stay there for, for years to come. So all these are interacting, interwined, and interconnected uh, kind of uh, constraints. Only those like the ca World Cabinet or the upper echelon of our military command who sits in real time, facing the data, the, uh, the facts, and the, uh, the leakages that emerge, uh, can run it. We cannot predict in advance how exactly it will uh, develop. Uh, but, and let me just ask you about the, the question you raised. Whom will you pass this to? Because it seems to me that uh, whomever you try, whether it's the Arabs, whether it's the Europeans, whether it's the Palestinian Authority in, in the West Bank, they're not going to want to come into Gaza on the back of Israeli tanks. So how do you solve that problem? Well, I will tell you an anecdote. In 2008, as you mentioned, uh, I was Minister of Defense between one of those rounds that usually ended with certain understandings with the Hamas mediated by Egypt and uh, giving relative calmness for a year and a half or two years. In one of them, I thought of the same. Why not to get rid of the Hamas at all and uh, pass it to someone? So I approached Mubarak and asked him, why don't you arrange once we eliminate Hamas military capabilities? Uh, you can demand from us to withdraw with no condition from day one. After three weeks, it was easier at that time we will capitulate to your demand. You will organize a multinational uh, Arab force led by you, probably Moroccans, uh, Emiratis, uh, whatever, Omanis, uh, soldiers, and you take it for very short periods, three or six months, during which you will bring back uh, to the place the originally internationally recognized owner, owner of the place, which is the Palestinian Authority. Your viewers might uh, already forget it, but originally, after Oslo Agreement, we gave Gaza to the Palestinian Authority. They were, were removed from power uh, through a violent coup d'etat by the Hamas. So, Mubarak uh, answered, no, 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 Barak, you conquered it in 67, it's now yours. I uh, will never, ever put my hands back into it. So I saw why couldn't I go to the bride itself, to Abu Mazen? I don't want to cut a, a, a long story short. Uh, Muba, uh, uh, Abu Mazen told me, basically, I cannot afford coming back to power in the Gaza Strip, sitting on Israeli bayonets. I didn't like the answer, but I cannot tell you that it doesn't carry certain logic into it. But it was 15 years ago. Now, after we have another 15 years of uh, peace with Egypt and Jordan, after we have the Abraham Accord, just two and a half weeks ago, uh, we already discussed the, the trilateral deal with the United States, Saudi Arabia and Israel. And in a way, I suspect the Hamas uh, pointed the timing of the, of the attack, which they prepare for more than a year now, in order to torpedo exactly this trilateral 
deal which were perceived by them as ignoring the Palestinian issue. So basically, when you think it is this way, probably what was impossible in uh, 2018 is might be possible now, backed by the uh, uh, Qatari or Saudi finance, uh, financial uh, uh, kind of uh, support and backed by uh, Arab League and probably UN Security Council resolution, they can take the whole area, make it, uh, keep it quiet for a few months after we leave and bring back the uh, Palestinian authority to take all I the think they, we, have to take a, we have to take a break. When we come back, yes, stay with me, Elie Barak. Well, I, I will ask Elie Barak mm -hmm. whether the peace plan he proposed between Israelis and Palestinians so many years ago is now a distant dream or is it something that can still be revived when we come back? The new CNN prime time is where the truth shines. The day's biggest stories, the night's most essential reporting. This is the new CNN prime time, weeknight starting at 7 on CNN. With the push of a button, Constant Contact's AI tools help you know what to say, even when you don't. Constant Contact, helping the small stand tall. Attention Medicare beneficiaries. If you have or are eligible for Medicaid, please listen closely. You may be eligible for a Medicare Advantage plan from WellCare with a zero or no plan premium. Call now. We can answer your questions and help you enroll over the phone. WellCare provides access to essential benefits that go beyond original Medicare, such as dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage with free home delivery, free over-the-counter health care items, free gym membership, and home-delivered meals. Plus, extra benefits like WellCare's telehealth services, including online doctor visits. WellCare is contracted with Medicare to provide plans that may be perfect for you. Call 1-877-297-3598. Now, that's 1-877-297-3598. WellCare. MLB chooses T-Mobile for Business for 5G solutions to not only enhance the fan experience, but to advance how the game is played. Now's the time to see what America's largest 5G network can do for your business. From pep in their step to shine in their coats, when people switch their dog's food to the farmer's dog, the effects can seem like magic. But there's no magic involved. It's just smarter, healthier pet food. It's amazing what real food can do. When your gut is out of balance, your body gives you signs. So if you're frustrated with occasional bloating, gas, or abdominal discomfort, help stop the frustration and start taking a line every day. A line probiotic was specifically designed by gastroenterologists to help relieve your occasional digestive upsets so you can enjoy life. When you feel the signs, it's time to try a line. This was no bear. It was like a bear squatch. Dad, what's a bear squatch? It's a cross between a bear and a sass. It's made up. He's usually sleeping. He'll never sleep again. Verizon Small Business Days are back from October 16th to the 22nd. Get a free tech check and special offers like a free 5G phone. Plus, switch, keep your number, and get up to $300 off with Verizon Business. It's your business. It's your Verizon. For generations, Asuyus has been the small town gem of the Okinawa and a home of Canada's warmest welcome. You can help keep it that way. Visit and see for yourself. We're home to terrific holiday adventures for everyone. Relax, dine, shop, and explore. Through your support of local business and by sharing your experiences, Asuyus will continue to thrive for generations to come. Plan your visit today at DestinationAsuyus.com. Its targets the root cause of joint soreness and stiffness with a unique combination of five key natural ingredients. Key ingredients backed by five clinical studies. I love this product. I'm telling you it works. Instaflex Advanced is the number one selling joint brand at GNC, but you can only get your complimentary sample by texting LOVE to 321-321. Plus, text now, and we'll include a tube of Instaflex pain cream for fast-acting relief absolutely free. Text L-O-V-E to 321-321 today. 
are known as Nona in Washington, and this is CNN. In July of 2000, President Bill Clinton welcomed Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak and Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat to his presidential retreat at Camp David. Their aim was to end the decades-long conflict once and for all. After two weeks, they appeared tantalizingly close to a historic deal until the Palestinians pulled out and talks broke down. Later that year, violence erupted across the region to begin a Palestinian uprising known as the Second Intifada. By then, prospects of a lasting peace were long gone. Back with me, one of the key players from that summit, Ehud Barak. Uh, Prime Minister Barak, is, is that dream of a two-state solution, uh, you know, just a complete fantasy at this point? I mean, I think about the map that uh, Clinton proposed right at the end, the so-called Clinton parameters, uh, which I know comes from Dennis Ross and was not accepted by either side. But, you know, it gives you a sense that there was a possibility of a, a kind of rational solution here. The Palestinians got in that map, which was not accepted, but it was close to what, what was being offered, 93%, 94% of what they had. Is all that dead with this wave of settlements that has taken place in the last 20 years and Palestinian, you know, the Palestinian Authority not having much credibility anyway? Look, uh, it's not the right time to discuss it because we are now at war. And first of all, we are focused on eliminating the military capability of Hamas and making it uh, out of the picture in the, in the Gaza Strip. But if you ask me on the longer term, there is an uh, old Roman saying, uh, if you don't know which port you want to reach, no wind will take you there. And those who say know that if you have a headwind uh, wind, you have to zigzag in order to reach this objective. I never lose uh, eye contact with this vision. It's not about dreams. It's about a vision for the future, which is needed for Israel uh, not because of justice for the Palestinians, because our own future uh, security and identity. But there is a great deb debate in Israel. The other side of the political map, led by Netanyahu and these two racist messianic uh, uh, guys that he joined hands with, uh, they have a different, they want one state, they want to block the whole thing. In, in a way, at the, at the foundation of this conflict of the last two weeks, uh, seat the their uh, strategy was taken by Netanyahu in the last uh, five years could be summarized in the sentence uh, Hamas is an asset and the Palestinian Authority is a liability rather than the other way around because why this? Because if the Hamas is still uh, alive and kicking no one can argue with us start negotiation with the Palestinians since we can easily, uh, the government can easily say uh, Abu Mazen does not control even half of his own people and with the Hamas no one will require from us to negotiate with terror organization. So basically it's an indirect way to block the possibility of two states. So I, uh, it's not the time to deal with it because we have to unite and first of all defeat Hamas on the ground. Later on there will come a day when we left Camp David and say whether it takes 5, 15, it's already more than 20 or 50 years. At the end, when the time will come to make an uh, agreement, that will come at certain point. You will need magnifying glass to see the difference between what was on the table and what will be concluded. And few year, years after a deal will be struck, no one will can explain why the hell it took so long and needed to bury so many people on both sides. Uh, finally and quickly, Prime Minister Barak, you, you said Benjamin Netanyahu is to blame for the greatest failure in Israeli history. Can he survive as Prime Minister after this failure? You know, if you ask the people, they will tell you no. You know, he got the trust, the mandate from the, for, to build the government some uh, 10 months ago or a little bit more. He, uh, the, the trust evaporated during the 7th of October, totally. No one trusts, especially with the two Michiganers in, the, in his government. Uh, and uh, the, if you look at the polls that were passed in the last week, you will find that 70% of Israeli public wants Netanyahu to resign. Half of them wants to him to resign immediately, others say that they end of the war. But in their mind, they have Israeli war. Six days war was one week. Uh, 73 wars, huge wars, three weeks, 
the longest conflict in the last generation, five years ago, was uh, less than two months. So the say, two months, let's bite our uh, lips and, and fight and, and put it on the shelf. But when you start to think in terms of a long road, that might say, uh, take, as he mentioned, uh, many months, probably a few years or more than a year, this is a phase it in a different way. I don't believe that the public trust Netanyahu to lead this, uh, this uh, uh, war. Uh, everyone is happy that uh, Gantz and Eisenhower, two opposition leaders who both happen to be uh, chief of staff of the armed forces and one of them, Gantz, even minister of defense, that makes the people more uh, feel more uh, secure that uh, irresponsible decisions won't be made. Uh, but having said that, people would expect uh, accountability. I, I uh, kind of so sorry to tell you that there is no Hebrew word for accountability. Think of the reason for it, but it's time to demand accountability. And I think that, uh, you know, everyone tells you, oh, he's over, it's not over. Netanyahu is focused on survival and on uh, releasing himself and the, what we call the poison machine that blaming uh, others and being responsible is working 24-7. Behind yeah, the scenes there are briefing against the uh, guns, against uh, against uh, Eisenhower, against the army leadership, against the intelligence, everyone responsible except for the men at the top. <laughs> Ehud Barak, pleasure to have you on, sir. I hope we can have you on again. Thank you. Next up, David Petraeus and Andrew Roberts on lessons for insurgencies everywhere. Your heart is the beat of life. If you have heart failure, entrust your heart to Entresto. Entresto helps improve your heart's ability to pump blood to the body. Don't take Entresto with pregnant. It can cause harm or death to an unborn baby. And don't take Entresto with an ACE inhibitor or alaskirin, or if you've had angioedema with an ACE or ARB. The most serious side effects are angioedema, low blood pressure, kidney problems, or high blood potassium. Ask your doctor if Entresto is right for you. Verizon Small Business Days are back. From October 16th to the 22nd, get a free tech check and special offers like a free 5G phone. Plus, switch, keep your number, and get up to $300 off. With Verizon Business, it's your business. It's your Verizon. When you have auto glass damage, mm. trust Safe Life. My customer really relies on his car's advanced safety system. You all right? Can I slow down? So when he got a cracked windshield, he turned to Safe Life. We're the experts at replacing glass and recalibrating your vehicle's camera. So automatic emergency braking and lane departure warning work properly to get you back on the road safely. And that means a lot. Schedule now. Safe Life Repair, Safe Life Replace. Hi, I'm Jason. I've lost 228 pounds on Golo. Oh. I don't ever want to go back to wearing a 4XL shirt and not being able to climb up the stairs without taking a break. So I'm committed to Golo for life. Meet Martha. Martha is 75 years old and has been on Medicare for 10 years now. But she's a bit cranky because she heard the 2024 Medicare Advantage plans are now available during the Medicare annual enrollment period. And she wants details. I'm already on Medicare. Why should I call and check up on my Medicare plan? Hi, Martha. Plans and benefits can change each and every year. That's why it's important to call to get your free 2024 Medicare benefits checkup. I already have my Medicare card. I am not calling. Martha, right now is the Medicare annual enrollment period. 2024 Medicare Advantage plans are now available, so everyone on Medicare can call to see if a Medicare Advantage plan may be better for you. You can even call to see if there are any changes to your current Medicare plan in the coming year. It probably won't answer the phone. Well, Martha, if you call 800-882-0987, a licensed insurance agent will speak with you and look up your plan options and see if there is a plan that will better fit your health care needs. Why don't I get these automatically? Martha, 2024 plans are now available, but you won't get a 2024 for Medicare Advantage plan automatically. I think I called before, so I'm not calling. Martha, right now is the Medicare annual enrollment period. 2024 plans are now available, so now's the time to call. So everyone on Medicare should call now during the Medicare annual enrollment period and get your free Medicare benefits checkup today. Just call the toll-free number on your screen. It's free. 
free. Yes, Martha. The call and no obligation Medicare benefits checkup is free. They can look up your plan options and let you know if you're eligible to enroll in a 2024 Medicare Advantage plan. Available in your zip code. Call now and we will see what plans may be best for you. It's time for me to call and get my free no obligation Medicare benefits review. That's right, Martha. I should have just given you the toll free number. It's on everyone's TV screen now. Call 800-882-0987. 800-882-0987. So many old tales. <laughs> Couple booking the family vacay? Come on. Comfort on free hot breakfast for the whole fam. And waffles. And splendid pools. Book direct at choicehotels.com. Isn't there space and leg room? That's more like it. The three-row Lexus DX. Almost four decade long military career, retired General David Petraeus faced plenty of insurgencies, mainly Iraq and Afghanistan. What do his insights from an extraordinary career tell us about this new war between Israel and Hamas? David Petraeus joins me now alongside the historian Andrew Roberts. The two are co authors of the new book, Conflict The Evolution of Warfare from 1945 to Ukraine. Andrew is, of course, now. Baron Roberts of Belgravia has been elevated to the peerage. Uh, Dave, let me start with you. Um, this issue of destroying Hamas, is that a realistic goal? I think it is a realistic goal, but it's going to be exceedingly difficult. Uh, we've seen how long it takes to clear cities roughly the size of Gaza City, nine months for the Iraqi security forces to clear the Islamic State out of Mosul, as an example, with our assistance, IDF much better, much more capable. But still, it's going to be very, very tough. And how they do it is very important. Uh, again, we had a question on the wall always, will this operation take more bad guys off the street than it creates by its conduct? And you've got to be careful that the answer to that uh, is going to be yes. And there has to also be a vision for the future. They can accomplish this mission, but then keep in mind that the definition of destroy in military doctrinal terms is render the enemy incapable of accomplishing his mission without reconstitution. So whatever it is that follows has to ensure that this cannot be reconstituted. Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad will try to come back so that whatever it is that takes over from the Israelis, and they have to determine that urgently. Ehud Barak was absolutely right on that. Uh, but they're not going to just do humanitarian assistance and reconstruction. They're going to have to conduct a counterinsurgency campaign to keep Hamas and the Islamic Jihad from coming back. When you did the search, one of the things that seemed to me so successful in that post-operation was you brokered a reconciliation yeah. between the Sun Sunnis and the Shias politically. Yes. So, I mean, do, do you need some kind of political vision? Very much so. There has to be a vision for the people in uh, Gaza, for the Palestinians, that distinguishes very clearly. The war is not on them. It's actually to make their lives better. If they will reject Hamas, their life will be better. By the way, the same for the, those in the West Bank. Uh, there has to be that. And again, what we did is we said to the Sunnis, if you'll break with al-Qaeda in Iraq, support us first and then the government. And then later, the same with the uh, Iranian-supported Shia militia, let's strip you away. And of course, we defeated then the, uh, the other elements, the, the militia that remained, and also al-Qaeda in Iraq and the Sunni insurgent groups. So that, that vision is crucial. Uh, and again, I think Ehud Barak had that exactly right as well. A quick thought on uh, Hezbollah before I go to you. Do you think Hezbollah will launch a serious uh, attack from the north? I don't think they want to do that, but the pressure will grow as the damage and destruction. Inevitably, there are going to be civilian casualties. Urban combat is fiendishly difficult, and I can't imagine a, co a context that is more difficult than this one hundreds of miles of tunnels, uh, suicide bombers, uh, enemy that doesn't wear uniforms, uses human shields, uh, civilians, and of course the over 200 hostages that are still there. Uh, so that's going to be very, very challenging uh, for them. And, it, it, and again, you have to have this vision that's going to try to separate the people from Hamas, uh, again, also in the West Bank as well. Hezbollah, though, got hammered in 2006, much worse than we realized at the time. We reassessed it several occasions. They'll do the occasional attacks and all the rest of that. 
I don't think they want to launch all 150,000 rockets, which would be devastating for Israel, but then would be even more devastating for Hezbollah, and they know that. And what can I just add that yep. operationally, of course, it's also very good for Israel uh, to be able to promise the Palestinian Arabs that they will be able to go back to Gaza, because then you could physically also separate them from the uh, Hamas that uh, you're trying to fight in Gaza City. Lots of history that, that bears that out. Uh, historically, I mean, you talk about militia as being one of the great successes of counterinsurgency. What do you draw as the key lesson to succeeding in a counterinsurgency? Well, the way that Malaysia worked is that they were able to offer the people independence. Uh, Malaysia became independent in 1957, and that was immensely important in winning what was said at the time to be the hearts and minds. That um, phrase was coined. That, that was the campaign. phrase, yes, exactly. And that ma they matter, and yeah. they matter here as well. And so Gerald Templer um, coined that phrase, and, uh, and it worked. And it wasn't just in Malaysia. It also worked in the Oman campaign, where they were able to offer progress, actual physical... Uh, uh, educational, um, agricultural, medical progress. And that's also something that obviously uh, could be an important part to play here. All right, stay with us. Uh, next up, I'm going to talk to General Petraeus and Lord Roberts about the other major conflict in the world right now, Ukraine, which we might have forgotten about, but it's still going on when we come back. Tonight, how did Hamas orchestrate their massive attack on Israel? Sarah Seidner explores the history of this secretive and dangerous terror group. And what comes next? The whole story with Anderson Cooper, tonight at 10 on CNN. Verizon Small Business Days are back from October 16th to the 22nd. Get a free tech check and special offers like a free 5G phone. Plus, switch, keep your number, and get up to $300 off with Verizon Business. It's your business. It's your Verizon. Introducing John and Mark. They're both on original Medicare. However, they've approached this year's Medicare annual enrollment period a little differently. John's had a few medical appointments this month, and he's starting to get worried about his out-of-pocket expenses. He has not called for his Medicare benefits review and is only on original Medicare. I found out that original Medicare doesn't cover routine dental, routine vision, or most prescription drugs. Mark, on the other hand, well, he called and enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan available in his zip code, which has additional benefits not covered under original Medicare. You just have to call and see what plan may be best for you. Mark knows that original Medicare only covers so much, and it doesn't cover things like routine dental, routine vision, or most prescription drugs. He wants to know why his friend doesn't have a plan with additional benefits. John, haven't you heard about Medicare Advantage plans? Wait, so you're saying that Medicare Advantage plans may have additional benefits not covered under original Medicare. John knew what he should do next. He called the number on the screen. He gave the agent his zip code. Really? I could get a Medicare Advantage plan with additional benefits in my zip code? That's right, John. 2024 Medicare Advantage plans are now available during the Medicare annual enrollment period. Call 800-726-5909 to speak with a licensed insurance agent and see what plans may be best for you. The call and Medicare benefits review are free. Remember, you don't automatically get enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan with additional benefits. Be like John and Mark. Call the number on your screen now to learn more about Medicare Advantage plans from Humana, Aetna, Anthem, Blue Cross, and Blue Shield, United Healthcare, WellCare, and more. The call and Medicare benefits review are absolutely free. Call 800-726-5909. 800-726-5909. 800-726-5909. AI chooses T-Mobile for business for 5G solutions because T-Mobile helps Pano AI innovate so they can stop the spread of wildfires. Now's the time to see what America's largest 5G network can do for your business. Jake Tabber, CNN, tomorrow 4. You want to see a trick? Sure. I can make anything you want appear on that TV. Um, superheroes. Superheroes. Well, cute animals. Cute animals. Wizards. Wizards! Did you like my trick? I saw the remote. With you, keeping the whole family entertained. Search endless content with the magical Ignite TV voice remote. Rogers, with you all the way. Who 
law passed by Congress now allows veterans and survivors to seek damages for harm from exposure to contaminated water at Camp Lejeune. Call Saddle Rock Legal Group to discuss your case now. Call 1-800-814-9977. in-store or online. I'm Erin Burnett in Tel Aviv, and this is CNN. Closed captioning is brought to you by Audiobook Network. Authors tell your story. Produce an audiobook with us. Want to earn more profits and find a new audience for your published book? Produce an audiobook. We handle narration, production, and digital distribution. 800-753-8559. We are going to pivot to the world's other major war in Ukraine. The long-awaited Ukrainian counteroffensive is stretching into its fifth month, and many in the West remain concerned that it is lagging. As winter approaches, what hope does Ukraine have against its much bigger, more powerful adversary? We are back with General David Petraeus and the great historian Andrew Roberts. Uh, both of you have been to, uh, to, uh, to Kiev and to, and to Ukraine. In fact, and you were there just a few weeks ago. Um, the conventional wisdom is the Ukrainian counteroffensive has not gone as well as planned. The Russians are fighting back better, harder, smarter. What can you tell us about all this? Well, first of all, I think one of the key factors I'm watching for is do the Russians actually crack and crumble at some point? No plan survives contact with the enemy. The Ukrainian plan did not. They had to adjust from armored breaching. The minefields are just much longer, than, deeper than anyone realized. So they've used infantry squads. That means you're going to gain 100, 150 meters a day as opposed to several meters if you get a breakthrough. The pressure, though, has been unrelenting on the Russians, and I think we need to see where that does lead. They're, they intend this is not just a summer and a fall offensive. They're going to fight all winter, and they've stated that publicly. Beyond that, we tend to overlook what they've done against Crimea and the, the Russian bases there. The base, the naval base of Sevastopol has had to be evacuated basically because of the Russian present losses due to the very diabolically clever maritime drones that Ukraine has developed. Uh, Ukraine hit the actual headquarters of the Black Sea Fleet during their command and staff meeting. Uh, they're reducing the capabilities of the airfield. This all takes time, though, and what they're trying to do is to reduce the logistical capacity to support these forces so that at some point in time, again, they might achieve that kind of breakthrough. But no, I think it's accurate to say that the, the hopes uh, for the counteroffensive had not been fully realized, but it's not over, and they're still driving to be able to cut that key line of communications that comes in from Russia along the southeast and southern uh, coast. Andrew, when I look at Russian history, the thing that worries me is they seem to be able to fight very long wars with very large numbers of casualties. They do when they're on the defensive, and that's very true historically, but actually they're not that good on the offensive. And this, um, uh, Russian soldiers recognize that this is an offensive war into somebody else's country. And historically there, uh, it hasn't been such a happy um, prospect. The other thing, of course, and something that comes out very strongly from our book is how important morale is. And the morale of an army that has taken a very serious bloody nose and also doesn't necessarily see any quick way to victory is going to be um, less than the Ukrainian army, which has still not the same kind of morale that it did at the uh, early stages of this war, but still of a, um, historically at least, at a level that, um, that uh, can uh, win a victory. In a sense, is the Ukrainian situation a little bit like, say, the Algerians? You know, the French, the, the Algerians trying to get independence. The French say, no, we're going to... The, the French, by some accounts, killed a million Algerians, but the Algerians never gave up. That's right. And also, of course, the other thing you saw in the Algerian war was the horrific use of torture and brutal uh, viciousness, which you're also seeing with the way in which the Russians are treating ordinary Ukrainian people. And that ultimately has uh, the effect of, um, of just enraging the population and, and in, in a sense, helping its morale to want to push through to ultimate victory. Has, has President Biden been handling Ukraine well? I think he, together with Congress, actually have led the effort uh, much better, than, certainly than Vladimir Putin expected, and I think quite, quite impressively. Uh, $44 billion worth of assistance is a, is a very substantial amount. We do need to continue to do more. I hope Congress can uh, come together on that issue. Uh, there have been decisions I felt that should have been made more rapidly. Some of the capabilities that uh, Ukraine did not.
not had during the summer might have been there that might have helped them uh, more than marginally, I think. But by and large, I think the U.S. has led well, effectively, kept NATO together, kept the Western world together, kept Russia from driving a wedge between uh, Europe and North America, and also led the effort on the uh, personal, economic, and financial sanctions and export controls, and now going after the sanctions evaders very effectively as well. Uh, the Russian strategy clearly, as far as I can tell, is to wait until November 2024, 20, hope that Trump gets elected, hope they can cut a deal where Trump will essentially sell the Ukrainians down the river. What do you say about that? Well, I think it, it's a concern what the outcome of the election is, without question. Uh, uh, will someone be elected who might actually not support this effort, which I think is as right versus wrong as anything in recent memory, except uh, until what happened on 7 October, which was also absolutely horrific. And keep in mind, when we think about that, that would be the equivalent of America having lost 50,000 innocent civilians on 9-11 as opposed to the nearly 3,000 that we lost. Um, final question, Andrew. This is an extraordinary book. How did the two of you write it across the, the Atlantic? <laughs> um, well, we got together immediately after the Russian invasion and decided that we were going to write this book. And uh, um, we divided up the chapters by saying, right, I said to you uh, that um, David would um, work on all the chapters of the countries he'd invaded and Vietnam, and I did the rest. <laughs> all right. Uh, must have been lots of email. Thank you both. Thousands. Amazing, amazing book. Thank you for And thanks to all of you for being part of my program this week. I will see you next week. The new CNN Prime Time is where the truth shines. The day's biggest stories. The night's most essential reporting. This is the new CNN Prime Time. Weeknights starting at 7 on CNN. Verizon Small Business Days are back from October 16th to the 22nd. Get a free tech check and special offers like a free 5G phone. Plus, switch, keep your number, and get up to $300 off with Verizon Business. It's your business. It's your Verizon. Which hotel? <laughs> Somebody say which hotel? I'm great at this. Dance your fees in the spa-like bathroom. Or enjoy local craft beers with breathtaking views of the Cambria. Book direct at choicehotels.com. Attention Medicare beneficiaries, if you have or are eligible for Medicaid, please listen closely. You may be eligible for a Medicare Advantage plan from WellCare with a zero or no plan premium. Call now. We can answer your questions and help you enroll over the phone. WellCare provides access to essential benefits that go beyond original Medicare, such as dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage with free home delivery. Free over-the-counter health care items, free gym membership, and home-delivered meals. Plus, extra benefits like WellCare's telehealth services, including online doctor visits. WellCare is contracted with Medicare to provide plans that may be perfect for you. Call 1-877-297-3598. Now, that's 1-877-297-3598. WellCare. MLB chooses T-Mobile for Business for 5G solutions to not only enhance the fan experience, but to advance how the game is played. Now's the time to see what America's largest 5G network can do for your business. That grimy film on your teeth. Dr. G. It's actually the buildup of plaque bacteria, which can cause cavities. Most toothpaste quit working in minutes, but Crespo Health's antibacterial fluoride protects all day. They stop cavities before they start. Crest. My most important kitchen tool? My brain. So I choose new Nareva Ultra. Unlike some others, it supports seven brain health indicators, including mental alertness, from one sermon to help keep me sharp. Try new Nareva Ultra. Think bigger. Every day, more dog people and more vets are deciding it's time for a fresh approach to pet food. They're quitting the kibble and kicking the cans and feeding their dogs dog food that's actually, well, food. Developed with vets, made from real meat and veggies, portioned for your dog, and delivered right to your door. It's smarter, healthier, pet food. Get 50% off your first box at thefarmersdog.com slash real food.
People thinking my daughter is my sister, that never gets old. With CeraVital Advanced, I wake up refreshed. CeraVital Advanced is an award-winning beauty supplement at Ulta. Get started today at CeraVital.com. The Situation Room with Wolf Blitzer, tomorrow at 6 on CNN. Stop! I am a good zombie! This October, spirits come home to rest all month long. This place is really haunted. What a weird mystery. With Hollow Scream on Disney+. Plus. People all over the country trust Bosby because they're ahead of the curve. They use the latest technology to give you your real hair back. And the best part, Bosley's permanent solution is protected by the Bosley Guarantee. Let them show you for free how awesome your hair could look with an absolutely free information kit and a gift card for $250 off. Scan the QR code. Don't wait. Scan the code now and ask about the Bosley Guarantee. I'm Manu Raju on Capitol Hill, and this is CNN. Hello, uh, I'm Wolf Blitzer in Washington, alongside Frederica Whitfield in Atlanta. We're watching all the breaking news. We want to welcome our viewers here in the United States and around the world. We begin with our special coverage with the quickly escalating developments in both Israel and Gaza and a warning. Some of what you are about to see is graphic. Israel Defense Forces now confirmed that their troops clashed with Hamas fighters inside Gaza today, marking just the second time Israeli forces have admitted to operating in the enclave since the Hamas terror attack took place some two weeks ago. It is yet another bloody day in central Gaza, where a new barrage of Israeli airstrikes hit targets overnight. Israel also launched launching a rare aerial attack on a mosque in the West Bank. The IDF says it thwarted an imminent terror attack from inside that mosque, but the Palestinian Authority calls it a dangerous escalation. The IDF is vowing to increase its aerial bombardment of Gaza just ahead of a potential ground incursion by Israel against Hamas in Gaza. This is the grim reality for so many in the Gaza Strip. These are the lifeless bodies of a toddler and three children killed in overnight strikes, airstrikes. Their parents have written the children's names on their legs to identify them. With the bloodshed and humanitarian crisis right now clearly growing, much more needed relief appears to be on its way into southern Gaza. Fifteen aid trucks from Egypt are being inspected right now in the Rafa border crossing area just one day after the first convoy, convoy of about 20 trucks was allowed into Gaza. For more on all the late breaking developments in the Middle East, I want to go to CNN's Matthew Chance. He's joining us live from northern Israel. Matthew, we're learning of a clash today, first of all, between Israeli and Hamas forces inside Gaza. What appears to be, uh, what appears to be one of the first skirmishes on the ground between the two sides uh, since the war broke out some two weeks ago. So what are you hearing? What's the latest? Yeah, that, that's right. I mean, this isn't necessarily the start of the much-anticipated grand invasion of the Gaza Strip by Israeli forces, where tens of thousands of troops have, have gathered uh, near the frontier with Gaza in preparation for that. But, but clearly, Israel has been conducting uh, sort of, you know, operate pinpoint operations into the Gaza Strip uh, to try and collect evidence of, of the whereabouts, for instance, of the 200 or more hostages uh, believed to still be held um, uh, by Hamas inside uh, Gaza. And this was, I think, the first time we've heard about that there was an actual confrontation on the ground between Hamas fighters in Gaza and Israeli forces going in. The Israeli military say at least one soldier was killed and a few others uh, injured as well in that confrontation. But it just gives you a small indication of how difficult it is going to be and how bloody it's going to be as well if and when that ground invasion takes place. Gaza is an extraordinarily difficult uh, place, terrain uh, to occupy. It's got narrow streets, it's got you know, flattened concrete buildings everywhere which provide all sorts of cover for snipers 
And don't forget the network of tunnels that runs underneath it as well, for which Hamas and other militant groups um, know very well and, of course, dug themselves for their use. That poses a massive threat to Israeli forces, and what we've seen today is a very early indication of that war. Good point, uh, Matthew. The IDF also says they launched an airstrike in the West Bank. So tell us what we know about that. What happened there? Yeah, went the West Bank town of Janine, um, which is, um, you know, uh, right there in the middle of Palestinian-controlled territory. It was a mosque in Janine that was struck by the Israeli Defense Forces. The IDF says uh, that it had um, intercepted intelligence, essentially, that indicated there was an attack being planned from beneath the mosque, from the basement of the mosque, by Hamas and uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, two prominent, of course, Palestinian uh, militant groups, and it acted to prevent that terrorist attack from taking place. Of course, Palestinians have been, you know, absolutely, you know, they've condemned this attack, the Palestinian leadership uh, saying it is an escalation, but it all adds uh, to the sense of hostility and violence and tension that is really gripping this region. Wolf. Uh, as, as if that were not enough, the IDF also says, Matthew, there is an escalating situation right where you are in northern Israel, not far from the southern Lebanese border, as Hezbollah militants in South Lebanon have been attacking Israeli positions. What, what are you seeing where you are? Tell our viewers what you're seeing and what you're hearing. Yeah, well, I mean, it's dark now, but it's it's very tense here up in northern Israel. The entire, you know, virtually the entire population of this town, of Kiryat Shimona, and dozens of other towns and villages across this region have been evacuated uh, to areas where it's more safe, out of the range of Hezbollah rockets. Hezbollah, of course, the Iranian-backed militia uh, inside uh, southern Lebanon. Hundreds of thousands of Israelis have essentially been displaced from their homes because of the threat of Hezbollah attack. That threat, according to the IDF, has been growing over the past week or so with more rocket attacks uh, aimed at the Israeli border and cross-border attacks, drones flying in the skies above Kiryat Shimona, uh, even um, you know, in, in, you know, penetrations by uh, mil militants from inside uh, Lebanon, either Hezbollah or Palestinian militant factions coming across the border and carrying out attacks inside Israel as well. They've been responded to, of course, by the Israeli Defense Forces, but what Israelis say, what the Israeli government yeah. says, is that their patience won't last forever, and that if there is you know, sufficient escalation on the part of the Lebanese side, on the part of Hezbollah, they will strike back in force, and they've been issuing very over warnings that Hezbollah may be dragging Lebanon into a war that it will lose. Well, and very quickly, Matthew, that town of Kiryat Shmona in northern Israel, not far from Lebanon, it's a town of about 20,000 people. I take it the Israelis, the Israeli military, told everyone in Kiryat Shmona to evacuate. Uh, have they done so? Is the town pretty much empty right now? Yeah, most of them have evacuated. It, it wasn't a mandatory evacuation. It, it's not mandatory for any of these communities, in fact. They're just being strongly advised because of the security situation to get out. They're being helped to do so, putting guest houses if they haven't got anywhere else to stay. Most people, I would say, in Kiryat Shimona at least, have uh, taken that advice and they've left. But you are seeing people coming back sort of in the daytime to check on their houses and to cook meals for the army and, and things like that. So it's not entirely empty at the moment. Matthew Chance in Northern Israel for us. Stay safe over there, Matthew. Thank you very much. We'll check back with you soon. CNN is also learning about a new push from the Biden administration to try to delay a possible full-scale Israeli ground incursion into Gaza. Our chief national security correspondent, Alex Marquardt, is joining us. And our CNN White House reporter, Priscilla Alvarez, is monitoring all these developments uh, as well. Priscilla, let me start with you. You're in Grover Beach. That's where the president is right now. We just learned that President Biden spoke with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu just a little while ago. Tell us what you're hearing about that call. That's right, Wolf, and they have been speaking multiple times since that attack on October 7th. In fact, the last time they spoke was on Friday. Now, we have not yet received a readout of what exactly was said in the call, but we know that in these conversations, President Biden has talked about the ongoing support that the U.S. is providing to Israel, as well as discussing the hostages that are still being held by Hamas, and also generally the U.S. position 
when it comes to this conflict, being that innocent civilians should be protected and the importance of getting humanitarian aid to Gaza, some of which we saw some progress on over the course of the weekend. Now, the president just yesterday here in Rehoboth was asked about whether the administration is trying to delay an invasion by Israel. Take a listen to what the president had to say. Are you encouraging Israelis to delay invasion? Now, this is a working weekend for the president, who was also briefed today by his national security team. So all uh, White House officials and the president himself carefully watching the developments in Israel and Gaza. Walt? Extremely tense moment right now. Uh, Alex, uh, you've got some news. I take it a senior Israeli official is denying that the Biden administration is pressing for a delay of an Israeli incursion into Gaza. What exactly are you hearing from the U.S. side and the Israeli side as far as the U.S. asking Israel to delay their incursion? Well, well the, the Israelis are denying this. Um, you did hear just there that the president, uh, when he was asked whether uh, they're pressing uh, the Israelis to de delay any kind of incursion into Gaza, he didn't say no. He just said he's speaking with the Israelis. And we heard from Secretary of State Antony Blinken earlier today, who uh, essentially said that this is uh, a decision that Israel has to make. Uh, the, the U.S. certainly doesn't want to be seen uh, telling Israel what to do. But, Wolf, what I've been told by two different sources is that uh, the Biden administration has been pressing the Israelis to allow for a bit more time to allow for progress on both the hostages and on the humanitarian aid to, to get into Gaza. We have seen today aid uh, successfully getting into Gaza. We've also seen on Friday those two American hostages who were released. There are still some 200 hostages uh, that the U.S. And, and many other countries desperately want to get out, that Qatar is, is working uh, on with Hamas to try to negotiate uh, their release. So these sources are telling me that, uh, that the Biden administration would like more time before Israel uh, launches that ground invasion uh, into Gaza. Now, the Israelis are saying that uh, the Biden administration is not pressing for that, but it is clear, as Priscilla was just mentioning, that while the U.S. is showing, uh, or uh, really speaking to their full-throated support for Israel, both uh, militarily and, and politically, there are major concerns uh, about that aid for Gazans and about getting those hostages out. Well, certainly are. Uh, I understand, uh, Alex, and this is very curious, I want your explanation, but the State Department has now ordered all non-emergency U.S. government personnel to leave Iraq. Tell us about that. Uh, non-emergency personnel uh, as well as uh, family members uh, to, to leave Iraq. Uh, this comes as the uh, State Department has issued uh, what they call a, a level four travel advisory, which is uh, essentially telling Americans not to go to Iraq. And it really speaks to uh, the growing fear of, uh, of a broadening conflict and how American citizens may be targeted. Well, if we've seen a series uh, of attacks against U.S. forces, against U.S. interests over the past week uh, in Iraq and elsewhere, as recently as Friday, we saw a rocket attack uh, near Baghdad Airport uh, that was targeting a, a U.S. diplomatic facility. So now the State Department is telling Americans not to go. Uh, they are announcing that uh, non-essential personnel, family members, can leave uh, Baghdad. Uh, Iraq is, is home to a number of these proxy groups that are backed uh, by Iran. Uh, and, and there is significant concern that Iran will press those proxy groups to target U.S. personnel uh, around the region. This is a warning that we heard from the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, earlier today, Wolf. It's interesting because it comes at the same time that the State Department has just issued a worldwide alert for all Americans traveling abroad to use, quote, increased caution. Tell us about this worldwide alert. It's pretty extraordinary. It's pretty extraordinary. It's quite dramatic, and, and that does reflect the concern uh, again to American citizens, not just in, in the region around the world. It, it's not something that happens very often. The last time we saw this uh, was last summer after the, the killing, the American uh, uh, killing of Ayman al-Zawahiri, the head of al-Qaeda. Uh, he was in Afghanistan. And so what this does is tell Americans around the world to, to be on alert. And, and Wolf, what I really think it speaks to is a, a lot more anger that is being directed these days at the American government and, and as a result at American citizens because of the support for Israel. Uh, the, since the horrific attacks by Hamas on October 7th, the U.S. has said that they will stand, of course, uh, with Israel. And now we're, we're hearing about billions of dollars in aid that the Biden administration is, is asking for uh, to, to give uh, Israel more, more military aid. And that has resulted in a real spike in anger against, uh, against the U.S. And, and, and against its citizens. So uh, here you have the State Department issuing this rare warning to uh, tell citizens globally uh, to remain alert.
Well, very alert indeed. Alex Marquardt, thank you. Priscilla Alvarez, thanks to you as well. Uh, joining us now, Tom Nides. He's a former U.S. ambassador to Israel. He served in that post under the Biden administration until July of this year. We also want to mention that the ambassador's wife, Virginia Mosley, is a senior executive here at CNN. Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, what's your reaction to our latest CNN reporting that the U.S. government is pressing Israel to delay its ground operations of Gaza to allow for more time to for ha Hamas to release more hostages, potentially. Do you think this is the right move? Well, first of all, Wolf, I, I think it's clear by the president's words and actions that he has sent a three very clear messages. One, we've got Israel's back, without question. Second, send a very stark warning to those forces, especially in Lebanon and Hezbollah and obviously Iran, you know, you know, his, the Biden has liked to say, you know, superpowers don't bluff, so stay out of this. And third is the humanitarian crisis, which is already uh, enormous, and I think the president has expressed enormous sympathy. This, the war we are in is not a war with the Palestinian people. It's a war with Hamas. Israel is at the war with Hamas who did and started this, and that is what we're focused on. But to be clear, it's imperative that we provide the ability for those suffering, those Palestinians who are down south and in Gaza, get the ability to be able to live uh, as, as well as they can under the circumstances. So the Cautionary the alert for Americans, Americans throughout the world. We can't hit, 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 Cautionary alert for Americans throughout the world. We can't hit, 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 Barbaric behavior on the on part of Hamas. Barbaric behavior on the part of Hamas. Look out. Be cautious. Be aware. Alert, alert, alert for all Americans traveling throughout the world at this time. You know, well, you, you've studied Israel for a long time, and I've obviously just spent time there. Um, I don't know. Um, I think that they're very much focused on re eliminating the threat to the state of Israel. Hamas's only goal to be clear, is not a goal about taking care of the Palestinian people or a two-state solution or making Palestinians live in a better situation. It's about the destruction of the state of Israel. And as the President Biden has said and the Vice President have said, uh, we stand by Israel to help eliminate, eliminate that threat to, uh, to Israel. Uh, what comes next uh, will take a lot of work among our allies, among the Gulf countries, to try to figure out how um, that is going to sustain. I think you know, I think the president's articulated this. I don't think anyone believes that Israel will, will occupy Gaza, uh, but they're, they're going to have to figure this out. And it's clearly not something that, um, as there's a game plan for this. Uh, as you know, uh, President ba Abbas in, uh, in the West Bank, he hates Hamas. So the combination of this complication is, but first things first, they've got to eliminate the threat to the state of Israel, and they need to eliminate that threat of Hamas to the men and women who are going through a torturous time right now in the state of Israel. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is warning Hezbollah in South Lebanon that if it joins the, this war, it will be devastating for the areas it controls in southern Lebanon. How concerned are you, Ambassador, about this conflict right now between Israel and Hamas expanding into a much wider regional war? Well, I'm concerned. I think we're all concerned, which is why uh, the president has been very clear, and Secretary Blinken has been very clear on the region. You know, don't screw around on this. You know, be careful, Hezbollah. Be careful, Iran. There's a reason why two very large ships with a lot of uh, soldiers are in the Mediterranean. Um, again, as I repeat, that the president likes to say superpowers don't bluff. Um, I think they need to take a quick step back 
to make sure we understand, they understand, the United States has Israel's back, and we are not going to stand by and let them do a two-front war between uh, between Hamas trying to destroy the state of Israel and then ultimately having uh, Hezbollah and Iran's proxy join in. Ambassador Tom Knights, thanks so much for joining us. Superpowers don't bluff. Superpowers don't bluff. Superpowers don't bluff. Superpowers don't bluff. They don't bluff. Superpowers won't bluff. They don't bluff. I saw the wood story out of arthritis and psoriasis. I was on a journey for a really long time to find some relief. Cosentix works for me. Cosentix helps real people get rid of 